Hey everybody, this is Steven Roselle. I want to do a quick overview of the bonus tool called uh, Pose Blend Shape Editor. So if you go into Bonus Tools, Animation, there will be a tool called the Pose Blend Shape Editor. Now this is actually based on a tool that's been around for a really long time, originally written by our very own Corey Moak, who has now moved on to bigger and greater things. But I revamped this tool quite a bit uh, and gave it a pretty good size overhaul back in uh, the 2013 release of bonus tools. And basically what it allows you to do is kind of manage the process of creating and modifying corrective blend shapes for a skin character. So the way it works here is it assumes that you already have a skeleton and it assumes that you already have a mesh. And what you can see here is that I've basically got the skinning already set up on the mesh. It's not perfect, but good enough. And I've also got a little bit of animation just for uh, kind of testing purposes. So what I'm going to do here is actually go in and create a secondary deformation, a blend shape, that will basically create a bicep and a tricep bulge for this arm. And I'll use the blend shape editor for doing this. So first thing I want to do is I want to grab the driving joint. So you're going to have one joint that's going to drive the corrective blend shape. And then I'm going to shift select the mesh. And then I'm going to go in here to the Blend Shape Editor and I'm going to say Create New Pose Blend Shape. And we're going to name this Bicep, like so. First thing you'll note, notice is that it tags this mesh with a new color, um, or rather it uh, shades it with a new color, and then it tags it with a label, an annotation, that is the name of the blend shape. So it's called Bicep. So what this is is basically a temporary view. So now I can actually switch between the two. If I basically go in here and grab my bicep, I can go in here and I can say show original mesh, or I can go in and I could say show selected bicep, or rather selected post blend shape, and it'll toggle between the two. So right now I'm viewing the actual blend shape. It hasn't actually been edited, so it looks the same. So what I want to do is go in here and sculpt the muscle to basically create the, the bulging bicep effect. And I can do this in either the pose mode or I can do it in the, uh, in the actual default uh, bind pose. So I'm actually going to turn on soft select and I'm going to just quickly go in here and create a nice little bulge effect here. And I'm not going to be too anal about this, but let's say I want to kind of taper this out a little bit here and then maybe I want to essentially spread that out and then add a little bit more scale right in there and maybe pull this in and just add just a little bit more bulge here and I might want to refine it differently in different places so something like that. I'm not going to go nuts with this. Basically what you'll see here is that I've created the bulging effect but if I go in and rotate the elbow it doesn't actually do anything. So what's happening is I'm actually viewing the target bun shape. I'm not actually viewing the actual animated mesh or rather skinned mesh. So I'm going to quickly go in here and I'm going to say show original mesh and now what you'll see is if I bend this elbow it will actually go in and apply the blend shape based on the original target point of the elbow. So when you originally create this you want the elbow to be bent or the joint to be bent in the direction at the the distance that you uh, that you are kind of shooting for. You'll notice it also tied it to a specific axis so if I rotate the Z it's not really affecting the blend shape, but if I rotate the Y, it is affecting the blend shape. So it does only tie to a specific axis, something to be aware of. But it uses the, the kind of dominant axis, the, the axis with the most change or, or variation as the driver. So it's kind of smart about how it, how it figures that out. So now I'm going to quickly just go back into my bind pose. And now I'll do a tricep. So again, I want to extend the joint in the direction that I want the effect to happen. I'm going to hyperextend it just slightly. I'm not going to go too crazy. I don't want to break his arm, but I'm going to hyperextend it a bit, grab the mesh and the joint, and then I'm going to go in and create a new pose. And this one will be called my tricep. So this is the muscle. And again, you'll notice it creates a new color, labels it so you can clearly see what you're working with. Now I have my bicep, which I can show, or I have my tricep, which I can show. And the tricep, I want to actually edit to show the effect of the tricep. So let's say for this time I want to actually go in and grab a, an edge loop. So I'm going to grab a loop and I'll turn off my soft select for now from there to maybe there. Whoops, missed it. 
Sorry, I'm working a small resolution here. Um, there we go. And I'll turn on soft select for that edge so I get a broader effect and then maybe taper that down a little bit, something like that. And now I'm going to pull that out and create my, my bicep effect, something like that. And that's probably a little bit harsh there. Um, I'm going to actually round that off a little bit, something like that. Okay, so I could obviously spend a lot more time on that. I'm not going to. Again, right now I'm working with the actual target blend shape, so I want to actually go in and show the original. And now what you'll see is I've got two corrective blend shapes. I've got the original blend shape for the arm, which triggers the bicep, and then I've got the new blend shape for the tricep. So a couple things I want to work on here. One is I want to actually go in and change the arm a little bit, so I can quickly go in and make edits just simply by selecting the bicep or tricep, whichever I want to work on, and just simply say show. That will show me that, and then I can basically go in here and I can start to add some edits. So you can say, uh, you can do this either in the deformed mode, or you can do this in the bind pose mode. I'll just quickly go into the bind pose, and then I'll go in here and grab a, a few vertices here, and let's just start to refine these a bit. So I'll pull that out a little bit there, maybe pull this out a little bit here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of refining the shape a little bit so that the bicep kind of comes out a little bit more in kind of this direction. So I'm adding a little bit of a bulge in the direction of the, the elbow. And again, I'm not going to go nuts with that. I'm just, again, making a quick edit. Now I'll say go in and show original mesh. You'll notice it goes back to the original mesh. It's not deformed because I haven't actually triggered that. If I go in and I trigger that, you can see it actually deforms that, and now I've got a slightly better bulge. It's still not perfect, but you get the basic idea. I could go in and keep refining that and correcting that until it looks the way that I want it to look. Now you'll notice that because I have two blend shapes, what's happening is the bind pose is kind of the reference point, the starting point, and then it's going out from the bind pose in one direction and then out from the bind pose in another direction. Now, I could actually exaggerate that a little bit more as well, but I'm not going to bother. So what I have here is basically zero, and then I have on, zero, and then I have on. So I don't have any overlap. So all this does is it creates blend shapes, and then it links set-driven key curves to those blend shapes. So if I wanted to modify this, all I have to do is go into the graph editor, and what you'll see here, if I grab the actual mesh, is that I have uh, some curves that are simple, essentially represent the joint rotations. So here I have the driven keys being driven by the joint rotation, which is in turn driving the weight of the, the blend shape, and all that is actually automated for you. But all I have to do is basically take these curves and essentially move them around, overlap them. So let's say I overlap them a little bit, and then maybe I want to slow down the, the rate of the trigger for this. Again, the second curve being the, the tricep, the first curve being the bicep. And now what I've basically done is I've created an extension, essentially, of both of those, and I've created an overlap so that one will be triggered while the other one is fading out. One will fade in while the other is fading out. So now I'll go back to my um, 3D view here, and I'll essentially go in and rotate this joint. And you can see that as I rotate it, it triggers the bicep as I rotate forward, and then as I rotate backwards, as the bicep is fading out. You can see right there at the end of the fade out of the bicep, the tricep comes on and then triggers and goes into full effect. So you can create as many of these overlapping blend shapes as you need to. And of course, this is only on a simple arm, but this could just as easily be created on a more complex object, like a full body or even a face. A couple of other things to point out here with the UI is that you can actually view multiple of these blend shapes at the same time. So if I go in and select both, both of these and say show selected, it will actually show me both of the target blend shape meshes simultaneously, which I may or may not want to do. And then, of course, I can go back to the original. You can also go in and, of course, um, refresh the list, which will basically just update this list up here. You can go in and you can delete any given blend shape. So I can just simply say I want to get take the tricep, delete that, and it will remove the entire effect. So if I were to go in here, for instance, and uh, let's say, for instance, extend this elbow out, you can see the tricep is in full effect. If I go in and grab that tricep node and just say delete, that will actually remove the effect of the tricep, but it does not remove the effect of the bicep. So you can go in and do basic editing. And then lastly, you can go in and you can access the actual blend shape node, which is going to be in the attribute editor. So if I say select the associated blend shape node, you can see there is the blend shape with the driven key attribute. And I can go into the attribute editor and actually take a look at this. I can drive the, the weight value directly if I want to actually just quickly test 
uh, transition of that blend shape without rotating the joint and so on. So that pretty much wraps it up. Hopefully you can find a use for this. Obviously um, this is nothing new. A lot of people ha have used corrective blend shapes in the past uh, to achieve these same kind of results. The difference here is that this is an automated user interface, an automated tool for helping you build the blend shapes as well as helping you kind of manage the blend shapes and uh, kind of maintain kind of a visual uh, connection to those blend shapes. So that wraps it up. Thanks for your time. Bye.